Hi, my name is Sue Wixted and I write children's books about buses. And I thought that this week for Indie Author Week, I would have my book, Daisy Daydream, The Nesterine Bus, as a raffle prize to celebrate Indie Author Week. You might have entered, but if not, I thought I would share the story anyway. Here is a photograph of the real Daisy Daydream. You can see this is the story that the book is based on. And it's the book or the bus that I painted. So here is the story of Daisy Daydream. That's the finished version of Daisy Daydream. Daisy was once a red double-decker bus travelling the busy streets of London. There had been lots of buses just like her, each with a different route to journey on. Every day her fat driver Philip and her conductor Val arrived ready to take her off to work. She was the number 73 and drove the busy Oxford Street route. If you've ever been to London, you will see there are lots and lots of red buses travelling around the streets. Quite an iconic feature of England. One day, a bright red bus drove into the garage and everything began to change. The big red bus was shiny and new. And unlike Daisy, it had a door at the front. It had an air system that blew with a pshhh that made the doors open and shut with ease. This bus didn't need a conductor. It only needed a driver. And with its up-to-date steering, easily moved around the tight corners of the London streets. As more and more new buses came along, Daisy knew that it would only be a matter of time before the new red buses took over and replaced the old buses just like her. You can see a nice big red bus with the doors at the front that have an air system that open them up very easily. One by one, the old buses disappeared. Some went off to museums, some went off to private collectors, and some went to be broken down for spare parts. Daisy worried what would happen to her. What job could she do now? Would she be forgotten and left behind? You can see some buses in the old bus museums. Perhaps you've been to visit any bus museums. Sometimes you can go inside the buses. Otherwise you just look at the old buses and see how they've changed. Carrying a newspaper, Philip rushed into the yard. Look at this, said Philip. What is it, asked Val, as she peered over Philip's shoulders at the newspaper. It's a story about an old bus that's been turned into a play bus. It looks a bit like our bus, he added. You can see there's Daisy in the background. And there's Philip and Val reading the newspaper. <gasps> what on earth is going on? And here is the newspaper report. It's all about a bus called JJ. The supersonic bus. So that's his book. Philip and Val read the story aloud and Daisy felt excited. It seemed that JJ the supersonic bus had once been an ordinary bus too. He'd been rescued from a scrapyard and transformed into a play bus for children to play on. Do you think we could do the same? asked Val. I don't see why not, said Philip. I'm sure there's lots of kids who need a safe place to play and would love to play on a bus. I wonder if you would. Philip and Val went off to the garage owner to tell him about their idea and together they made a plan and set about raising the money to buy the old bus for themselves. They contacted newspapers, radio stations and even the television studios and everyone agreed it was a good idea. Television reporters thought the play bus sounded a great idea for a programme. A bus could visit lots of different places and perhaps each spot stop would bring new adventures for the children. What about the newspaper? Philip and Val decided they would visit the real JJ the supersonic bus to see for themselves. They met Alex, JJ's driver, to ask for advice. It was great to see the bus in action. JJ had a calm and cosy feel and the kids loved playing on their bus. Philip and Val knew there were children who would want to play on a bus, their bus too. You can see there's... JJ the supersonic bus, all the children having lots of fun. They can play inside and outside. And Philip is explaining, listening to, to Alex, talking about what they did and how JJ was turned into a play bus. From then on, lots of things changed. 
Daisy was sent to a special bus garage and there the men knew all about JJ and how to change Daisy into a special play bus. First, they took out all the seats. This was a bit of a worry for Daisy. But now, without the seats, there was much more room inside for the children to play. Special seats were added and lifted open to reveal a treasure of toys inside. And you can see, first of all, they take out all the seats. Where will the children sit? But then they put in this special box seating, which if you lift it open, full of toys. There you can see all the men working on Daisy, making all the changes. They built a downstairs area with messy arts and crafts. Paint and glue could be used and they even built a special tray where sand would be added. Outside they added a slide to fit on the bonnet of the bus, just like JJ's. There's the arts and crafts and there we've got the slide at the front so the children could climb up and slide down. I think they liked this. News of the work on Daisy was followed in the newspapers and on television. Local schools were invited to enter a competition to name the bus, as well as to suggest suitable pictures that the children, little children might like. Daisy was sent to a special paint shop where they cleaned off some of her old paint and covered all her windows with paper. How will I see what I'm there, where I'm going? wondered Daisy. There was a fizzing sound and she felt a cool spray. She realised she was getting a new coat of paint. She wouldn't be red anymore. Her new green and blue colours made a landscape filled with trees and rolling hills. There you can see, they've covered up her windows because you don't want paint on your windows. And they've filled it with green at the bottom and blue at the top, ready for lots of pictures to be added. They added some favourite nursery rhyme characters and they, she knew that the children would love them. She felt a tickle of the brushes as the pictures were painted on. She felt a giggle inside which made her feel happy. She was excited and nervous. Along came Philip and Val to watch as the paper was removed and the bright new bus was revealed. Oh, wow, said Val. You can see the paint pots have been using and here it is. Open her up like a present. Ta-da! Here's your new play bus. Painted on the door of the bus was Humpty Dumpty sitting on a wall welcoming the children inside. Nearby was a painting of Barbar Black Sheep with his three bags of wool for the little boy. Sitting under a tree by the slide sat little Miss Muffet and a spider dropped down beside her. On the other side of the bus, Philip and Val saw a painting of little Bo Peep. She was busy looking for the sheep who were hiding on the back of the bus. I wonder if you know these nursery rhymes. There's Humpty Dumpty sitting on the wall welcoming the children. Barbar Black Sheep. See little Miss Muffet with the spider dangling down. And there's Bo Peep looking for the sheep, but they're hiding at the back of the bus. There was also a painting of Jack and Jill who were tumbling down the hill after collecting a bucket of water. Little Boy Blue was sleeping under a haystack and with a painting of the little old woman who lived in a shoe full of children, the scene was complete. Some more rhymes you might know. There's Jack and Jill and there's Little Boy Blue and the old woman who lived in a shoe had so many children she didn't know what to do. The bus looked beautiful. I think the kids will love singing these nursery rhymes, said Philip. It was then that Daisy was given her new name, Daisy Daydream. White daisies were painted all along the grassy slopes of the bus. I love the daisies, said Val. Daisy Daydream, said Philip. Perfect. She certainly is our dream, said Val. You see? There she is, beautiful pictures on the side, daisies all along the bottom. Finally, stuffed full of all the things needed to make her ready for play, Daisy was ready to meet the children. Philip and Val organised a special celebration for the children to come along and meet this beautiful bus. There was a surprise when JJ, the supersonic bus, and his driver Alex arrived. They'd brought the mayor to officially open Daisy Daydream. The two buses were parked side by side. They looked a perfect pair. There you can see JJ the supersonic bus and Daisy side by side and the mayor ready to open it and let the children inside. The mayor made a special speech and cut the ribbon and Daisy Daydream 
it was officially opened. And you can see all the children waiting. There were balloons and bunting. Hurrah! Our new play bus. Let's all run inside and have a look. The children were eager, of course, to come along and explore inside. The party soon became a place full of chattering, happy children, having fun and enjoying the adventure. Daisy Direct Daydream was so glad that Philip had and Val had saved her. And for Daisy, this was a dream come true. And there you can see the children having such fun. And do you know, there was a real bus and the children really did enjoy it. And at the back of the bus, you can see some pictures of the real bus. And also, there was once a television programme for little children, and it was called Play Bus. It later changed its name to Play Days. I wonder if you could find out about that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book, and if you did, maybe you'd like to know that Daisy has also got a book full of bus rhymes and jokes, but her bus rhymes and jokes have got a bus theme to them, of 